what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at Windows XP running on the iPad Air now this is the fifth generation iPad Air with that M1 chip and uh, to tell you the truth I've actually been having a blast with this I've made a few videos showing off some emulators running using this as a desktop you know if you're interested in checking those out I'll leave a link in the description but to get Windows XP up and running or a Linux operating system or even Windows 11 on the iPad I'm going to be using an application called UTM. This iPad is not jailbroken, but I did have to sideload this app, and we also have to give it some permissions. So to do this, I use something called Alt Store. It's actually really easy to use. Uh, you can follow their directions over on the website. I'll leave a link in the description. But basically, what we're doing here is using our own free Apple developer account to get these up and running. Now, if you've got an iCloud or an Apple ID, then you can get a free developer account. And we can run up to three different apps on here, you know, side loaded using Alt Store. And uh, unfortunately, Alt Store counts as one. So basically, we can have two side loaded apps at the same time. And I opted to check out UTM. Now, I used this in the past for Android running on the older iPads. But for the past couple days, I've been messing around with Windows XP. And it's definitely bringing back some memories. And it's actually been really fun to mess around with. And like I mentioned, you could also run Windows 11, but I really haven't had good luck with it. But one that I've been messing around with alongside of Windows XP is Ubuntu, and it does perform quite well on this M1 iPad. So as you can see, we do have touch functionality here. We've also got our on-screen keyboard. But if you've got either a USB or a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, it'll work with this. I've just got a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard connected directly to the iPad. It's just been paired in iPad OS, and with UTM, we can actually just use it right in XP or whatever other operating system that you want to run with this software. Now, this iPad has 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I think I've dedicated either 3, maybe 2 gigs here. I mean, 2 gigs was plenty for this XP system. And obviously, it's not going to be without its issues. Now, one thing that I can't get working here is shared storage. With Linux, it actually works right in UTM. But for some reason with XP, I just can't get shared storage to work. So all of the applications that I wanted to run, I had to download them directly in Windows XP here. And at first, it was a bit of a pain because I kept trying to use Internet Explorer. And really, when it comes down to it, a lot of the web pages just won't work. Now, all of the preloaded applications like the Media Player, which we will take a look at in a second, Calculator, the games with XP, all of them work phenomenally on this iPad. But Internet Explorer is just one of those that's so outdated, it's really hard to get web pages to load on it. But there is a workaround. You can actually download an older version of Firefox, and this does function really well. So I've been using Firefox here to go through and kind of download everything that I wanted to test. And in this video, I definitely wanted to take a look at the media player. We're going to test a little bit of Super Nintendo emulation. I've also got a couple games up and running. I guess we'll test out Oregon Trail and some built-in games here. But there is one major downside to running this in virtualization on the M1 iPad or the M1 chip in general, and that's we have no access to Direct3D. And at first, going into this, I kind of jumped the gun. I was really excited about testing out some 3D games here. But as soon as I kind of started installing them, I noticed that we weren't getting access to a GPU here, or at least Direct3D. And unfortunately, I read through the documentation, and sure enough, we just can't play games like Halo on this right now. Which is unfortunate, but there's still games that we can run on this. I was able to get Top Gear's Need for Speed on this, uh, Oregon Trail, and a few others. We're going to take a look at a couple here. But, you know, when I was younger, one thing I spent a lot of time in was Windows Media Player. Just messing around with it, changing the skins, and we've got access to all of that. So as soon as I started this up, I was like, I definitely want to test this out. Got a few of those preloaded skins in here, and I'm not exactly sure where I could go and download some. I, I haven't even searched. I'm sure there's somewhere we could. But I wanted to see video playback here, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know there's one video that I test on a lot of different devices that I get, be it Android, Linux devices, and that's Big Buck Bunny. So what I've done here is just kind of convert it so it would play here in Windows Media Player. And yeah, I just kind of wanted to show this off. I thought it was really cool. And like I mentioned, this is one I do a lot of testing with, at least the 4K 60fps version. This is far off from 4K because I went down to 360p, so it's a little downgraded, but I was able to get this playing in Windows XP on the iPad. Next thing I wanted to show off were a couple of these built-in Windows XP games. Here we have Minesweeper. And this is one I've never looked up the rules to. I've never really understood how to play it, and I actually refuse to look them up even after this video. 
but this is something I used to play all the time, and really it just came down to it being built into Windows XP, very easily accessible. And another one that I used to play, and I know a lot of other people used to play, is Pinball 3D. So it is here, we've also got all of the solitary games, all of the card games that always came preloaded with this. But uh, even to this day, I still love playing this. Whenever I get an old PC with an older operating system, this is the first thing I look for just to see if we can boot it up. And once I got this up and running on the iPad, this was the first application that I went to. I was also able to get Oregon Trail 5th edition up and running here. It's on my main drive and uh, if I can get it to start back up, there we go. And we'll get right into a little bit of gameplay here. And you know I had to skip right into the best part of the whole game. Mouse is a bit laggy here, but overall I mean you could definitely play this game. And uh, there's a brand new version on the App Store that you could run natively on the iPad using iPad OS that does look really good, but I'd rather go back with this and play the old version. And the final thing I wanted to show off in this video was a little bit of emulation. So we're going to go with some SNES, and uh, the emulator we're going to be using here is known as ZSNES. This was actually the very first emulator I really started using. Still to this day, one of my favorite emulators, and in fact, I've got it installed on my Windows 11 PC. I don't use it much anymore, but this is actually the DOS version, and it runs really well here in XP on the iPad. So we'll just go with Sunset Riders, and I've got sound working. It seems to be running at full speed. I mean, it does perform really well, but one thing I really couldn't get to work properly was a controller. I was actually able to map the D-pad, but a lot of the buttons just wouldn't map inside of this emulator right now. I didn't try to enable anything from UTM, and there's probably a gamepad setting that we could turn on there. But we'll go with the keyboard for now, and I'm going to be horrible at this game playing with a keyboard. But yeah, Super Nintendo emulation works here in XP on the iPad. Not bad at all. So overall, works pretty well. I wouldn't use this as my everyday operating system on the iPad. It's just something cool to mess around with. There's other operating systems that you can run with UTM. And if you're interested in seeing any of the other ones, just let me know what it is in the comments below. And if you're interested in getting this up and running on your iPhone or your iPad, all you're going to need is an iCloud account. And if you've got an iPad or an iPhone, you probably already have one. And Alt Store. So I'll leave a link in the description to Alt Store. And when it comes to UTM, you could actually just run this on your Mac if you want to. I'll also leave a link to their website. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.